Hello, folks. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, it's another Friday, and the last Friday in the month of February. And so, welcome to Journalist Hangout. I'm Citizen Jones. On the program today, at last, the President signs Electoral Act Amendment Bill into law, and later on, Zamfara Assembly defends impeachment of Deputy Governor Mahadi Aliyu Guso. A serving senator takes his place. I'm hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju. Uh, BKO, I greet you. Thank you for having me, citizen. And of course, we have Emeka Madunago. Emeka, welcome. Good, Good evening. evening. Yes, I agree. So the Good team was. is ready. I hope you are. All right, then. You know, it may have taken a long time in coming, but like morning follows the night, judgment was sure coming for billionaire kidnapper Chuku Dumeme Onwa Madike, a.k.a. Evans, plus two others. And the two others are Uchenna Amadi and Okuchuku Nwachuku. Justice Hakim Oshodi of the Lagos High Court, Ikeja, sentenced the threesome on Friday, that's today, after convicting them on two counts of conspiring and kidnapping of a businessman Donatus Duru. Evans, Justice Oshodi remarked, showed no remorse in the dock and tried to lie his way out of the crimes despite the video evidence. Recall that Evans was first arraigned on 14th of February 2017. Uh, Jide, yes, justice perhaps was long in coming. Yes. Uh, the <coughs> wheel did <coughs> grind slowly, but at last he had his day in court and so the sentence is coming. Yes, uh, it has come uh, in the end. It has taken so long in coming. But um, we cannot uh, be unhappy that the fellow Evans has finally um, been sentenced. Many Nigerians have been wondering why it took so long, you know, because they felt if we publish someone like Evans, uh, it has a way of um, getting other kidnappers to realize that the will of justice will eventually um, catch up with them. Uh, at the end of the law, will eventually catch up with them and justice will be served. So, uh, according to the judge, when the uh, Evans looked very jovial, uh, mm. in his confessional video but he told the judge that the police told him to act that scene <laughs> like a Nollywood star <laughs> you know <laughs> so and uh, when he was told that the victim one of his uh, a prominent victim um, uh, Sivanos uh, Ahamunu yeah. uh, recognized him he said it is not difficult to recognize my face meaning that he was admitting that having been made famous by the crimes that he committed yeah. that anybody could recognize him and uh, he told the judge that uh, the businessman had apparently um, connived with the police to lie against him yeah so boys that those were the reasons why the judge felt this fellow was not remorseful uh, he told the judge that he was uh, into college business, that he was an employer of uh, no less than 30 persons, and that um, he was never involved in, in kidnapping, that the police forced him to lie against himself in, uh, in his confessional statement. But the good thing is... Even a Hollywood script would not go that way. No, no, no. In fact, it, it looks really ridiculous <laughs> in the end. But uh, you know, lawyers will tell you to give it your best shot. They will mm. coach you what to say and all that. Uh, they, will, they will sometimes even simulate a court session mm. so that the accused person can be properly prepared. But the good thing is, at the end of the day, the accused person could not uh, escape uh, justice. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear the, the idea is to create a doubt in the mind of the judge, in which case the case would be determined in favor of the accused. Yeah, but there are other cases. This oh. is not, uh, 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 it's already, is um, 
is going to stand trial in uh, other states, including Edo and one of the states of the southeast. So it's not even in Lagos alone that uh, is going to face justice. So yeah. what does he say in those About places the, when yeah. his trial begins? In those places? Because I, I don't have evidence that the cases are consolidated. Emeka, it's not just kidnapping. We have had uh, uh, robbers cast the mold of uh, uh, was it that famous uh, 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 robber? Anene. Who, uh, no, Anene and uh, Robin Hood. Or Robin Hood and so on, yeah. Mm. So, but his day has come. We talk about the will of justice in this country mm. grinding slowly. Really you know, slowly. It, it, it leaves a lot of question mark uh, on, on, on the minds of uh, the society. Yes, well, actually. Um, the wheels of justice actually grind much faster in election disputes, political cases. <laughs> they grind very quickly. But um, not when it has not to surprisingly. do with, uh, well, uh, our biggest business in Nigeria is the politics with a subset of um, crime. Mm. So <laughs> these, it's, it's, it's a good thing that um, justice has been served, you know, life imprisonment, even though people were expecting maybe the death penalty. But... Of course, life imprisonment is by no means a lesser, a lesser mm. punishment. And um, every, it must be made clear that crime will be punished in the severest form. Mm. Such heinous crimes will be punished in, in, in the severest form. And I think that is what the learned judge, trial judge, has done. All the efforts by Evans to sway the case in his favor, to fall on sentiments and, you know, get mm. things going on inside failed. And it's, it's remarkable that the prosecution was able to build a solid case against him and followed it off from 2017 till date. That is like five good years. Mm. I'm very happy that... Of course, we can point to this case as um, one of those matters in which the prosecution, in which the state did not allow itself to be swayed by any considerations, any extra legal yeah. considerations. Uh, Emeka, almost so many, all states have criminalized uh, kidnapping to the point of making it a capital offense. Yes, offense, yes. So, uh, including Lagos. Yes. Uh, so uh, we look at deterrence here. Deterrence. That is the, that is the goal. Some states prescribe um, um, the law. Some states prescribe the death sentence. In Lagos, the it is um, the mandatory sentence the, or the mandatory punishment is life imprisonment. Um, it's not kidnapping. Is not. Um, as prevalent in Lagos as it is in some in, states, in even in some yeah. states of the southwest. Yeah. So, yeah. if a state like Delta State decided that look, the punishment for kidnapping is death, is because of uh, the they've looked at the yeah. social situation yeah. in their state. If a state like Bayesa mm. opted for death penalty, it must also so, because so be yes, every society deserves the kind of laws. That, uh, yeah. that I get. So for Lagos, um, the life imprisonment is still, is still good enough and All right. it's, it's very fitting that it's, very a billionaire, nice. it's a billionaire kidnapper, the one who collects ransom in dollars that has um, <laughs> now been sentenced to life imprisonment. All right. So, but, but as they say, it is not yet Uhuru. All right, to our next story. You know, it's no longer news that a bill seeking to ed establish the NYSE Trust Fund has passed the second reading in the House of Representatives. The 49-year-old NYSE is beset with funding challenges, hence the Trust Fund seeks to provide a sustainable source of funding for it. Number four, Citizen Speaker Femi Bajabir Miller says the creation of the NYSE Trust Fund is long overdue. 
But Biamila spoke at the public hearing by the House Committee on Youth Development. Let me quote him. National Youth Service Corps Trust Fund Bill is an essential and long overdue conversation about the future of the scheme and the options of reforming it, uh, options or reforming it, so that in whatever form it continues to exist, it serves the best interest of our beloved country. Emeka, you cannot quarrel with that. But I quarrel with the idea of a trust fund. Must we use trust funds for everything? Police, you want to beef up funding for police, trust fund. Sports, trust fund. All kinds of things, trust fund. I think we should create more sustainable means of funding veritable national inst and state institutions. The NYIC program is laudable, but it's overdue for a total overhaul. Is it serving the best interests of Nigerians? A situation where core members can't even find where to serve. During my, during, during my time as on National Youth Service, I didn't have anywhere to serve. So I was just going to the local government every morning to just sit down, spend time. So you had a place mm -hmm. to serve. <laughs> well, we can, <laughs> well, in a way we can call it that. But what I'm yeah. saying is that beyond funding, we need to look critically at how we can use NYSC to tackle youth unemployment, to ensure that the but, but, but that is what this scheme is about. The, the, the scheme this is this money is tackle. not for the NYC. No, no. See. no what, it what, is, what I'm it is seed to. money. Just hold on. Yes. You know, it is seed money yes. for core members who will have received some level of yes. training yes. and skills yes. Uh, yes. and all that. So that when they leave, um, when, they, when they finish their national service, they don't need to go chasing the white collar jobs that are not there. But is yeah. this sustainable? Did you that see? is my question. Is yes, if, the, if the, it is backed by law. For example, in some countries of the world, what they do even to propose post is to say, okay, you big corporations, a certain percentage of your earnings you set aside so that we can use it to promote posts. Now, some of those, those corporations will get tax waivers, tax holidays, and all that yeah. in in exchange for supporting such a worthy cause. So in this case now, they are look, they are trying to create a, a, a kind of a stream of funding that these children, after service, we can give some of them like, like startup capital so that they can go and start business of their own. If you saw some of the testimonies of last Sunday, yeah, you yeah. saw there, there is someone who is already an employer of 80 persons, a, a core okay. member. There's no way we can't find jobs for all of these people. All you can do is teach them skills. We can't all sit in the office to work. Some of us will end up as uh, um, hairdressers, as uh, owners of barbing salons and all that. And they may make it even uh, based on that, some of them may go into uh, fabrication of uh, tools and, uh, and, and, and all sorts. Yes. Yeah. So this is the point that uh, this this uh, this trust, trust fund, fund yeah, seeks to, to serve. serve. And some of the people who had um, benefited from even NYC support, we can see where they are. They are on their own, some have their own potries. They are not looking for any job anywhere. So I yeah. think that is the essence of the thing. By the time they explained it in detail to the Speaker of the House of Reps, it became clear to him why this thing was necessary. And that was why. He's not talking about NYC per se. No, no, no. Uh, no, no that's no, not, that's not my argument. No, what I'm no because you went well, into no, why, I'm saying, how we can no, no, what I'm find jobs that, for uh, these people. It's not about finding, government can't find jobs for people. No, but that but was the government finds jobs for people, there's nothing wrong with it. What I'm talking about is I'm looking at a sustainable model. If the if these trust funds is the only means by which they can achieve all these things, for now, good and fine. But what I'm talking about is that you have to expand it because we have a huge base of youths who are unemployed, not just those coming out of um, tertiary yeah. institutions. Yeah. How do we make sure that these people... That's come a out conversation of for another day. We are well, talking about know, NYC now. You know, but if huh? the number four citizen is uh, uh, very much uh, happy with the 
with the idea. The idea. So, mm. so be it. Yeah. Because the public here and everyone has. What I'm saying is that it should be enlarged. Oh yeah. Okay. To so incorporate uh, youth no, not generally. Not just youth. What I'm saying is this: there should be a wider conversation as far as even entry point into schools. So when you are taking people into, into courses, you are making sure that throughout they can fit into the system. They can fit into what the trust fund actually seeks to achieve. All right. The debate will continue wherever you, you might be. So uh, the NYC trust fund is perhaps another of the new laws we should expect anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. All right, then, to our next story. After months of controversy over aspects of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, Mr. President Muhammadu Buhari signed the reworked bill into law, Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the Number One, number one Citizen, Femi Ade Shina, had promised on Tuesday that the document would be made law by today. Of course, vexatious direct primary model uh, of selecting candidates for political parties has given way to the indirect primary and consensus mode of primary uh, two. We admit that the signed amendment law is not a silver bullet for our man-made electoral misfortunes and that politicians will begin to clean the morally questionable political process. Or don't you think so, uh, J.D.? Yes, but uh, the electoral arbiter has to provide the building blocks for credible elections in our country. If you leave everything to politicians, then um, mess, mess you up. are sowing the seeds of confusion and uh, so much bedlam in our country. This, the electoral body that has the um, responsibility of providing those building blocks and ensure that we get to achieve credible, free elections in our country. This is what a lot of us are convinced that this electoral um, bill will achieve. Because for the first time, we are talking about electronic transmission of results. Nothing excites Nigerians so much about this bill as the possibility of electronic transmission of results, which means that you, Citizen Jones, if you voted in front of your house, you can also monitor the voting process far away from your house, even um, without being physically present in those places. And you can, from the monitoring, you can mm. even determine who indeed will carry the day. It's not, uh, it's not going to be a question of waiting for three days before we have an idea of who has won an election. Where we make it that transparent, as we saw in Ondo State, before INEC announced the winner, we already knew. On social media, on all the platforms, people were already convinced and sure of the winner of the election. It was the same thing that we saw in Edo State, because the people could follow the process. Because INEC had a server, through a portal, through which people can monitor the progress on election day, right up to announcement of results at the various coalition centers. Yeah. And with this electronic uh, um, oh, transmission okay. of results, you don't need to be going around with physical paper, um, in which uh, case, so, uh, on some occasions, they even get uh, attacked on the way. Uh, I make uh, staff, even sometimes they kidnap them on the way. Mm. So it means that the process will become a lot more transparent. That's what we want. We don't want a situation in which people will be rigging our elections. That's, uh, how many elections have we had in our country that we can truly say we are proud of? Oh, yeah. But we oh, must man. get there. Yes. Because smaller countries, frontline African states, that Nigeria committed its resources to make and them yeah. better. Today, 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 they are organizing better people. elections than us. Yeah. So it should prick our conscience that uh, how come we can't do credible elections? So this is one step to getting there. It has taken so long, but it gives me joy that this president, after five attempts, yeah. has finally given his assent. Whatever he has complained about, uh, uh, I'm sure that that will be addressed. 
the good thing is he has, he has signed. Those alterations will be made later, but we won't have to have a, 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 a kind of sig a significant uh, event yeah. Yeah. You know, when that happens. That, you know? So, the, as he said, fine, let them remove that portion that the president thinks uh, bridges the rights of uh, of uh, people who are already to, serving in government now at yeah. this time. So, because according to him, it breaches the constitution. So, e e you see, because in Africa you get the impression that democracy is ab about elections and more elections, more so in Nigeria, and people become apathetic. You hear that because uh, they say if you vote, your vote will not count. And uh, that every and somebody had said, "Look, it is not about you voting; it's about counting the votes." Mm -hmm. So the elect elect electronic transmission of results is also in. But this signed act is not a silver bullet, as we always say. Mm. Yes, of course, uh, laws are made for men, not men for laws, like they say. Mm. So it takes the will of men and women to make laws, to implement laws, and to make them workable. Because laws are meant for the improvement of the society. That's, you know, I've been said. I like what has happened today, and I think it should be, it should serve as a guide to the executive in terms of handling uh, pieces of legislation coming from the National Assembly. And what am I talking about? If there are contentious issues in a bill, it should not delay, the, the, that fact should not delay the signing of such bills. Like the President has done today, I think this could have even been taken care of some months ago. This matter has dragged on for so long, for too long. Mm -hmm. Now he has come to the point that And those, said, some of those issues were yes, not really significant. Yes, he has said, Okay, I'm signing it, but National Assembly take charge, take care of this, mm. which I believe this should guide, this should guide the executive going forward, you know, in terms of signing bills. Then the other aspect is that, is a challenge to us as Nigerians, particularly in the south. I must just say clearly, it's in the south. These provisions, as as lovely as they may be, as noble as they may be, up not on election day they take it as a serious business and people turn out in their numbers but in the south here yeah, you see people playing football people sit at home watching mm. um, movies and then tomorrow they say oh that uh, governor is a b c <laughs> and all of that whereas yeah. you are not participating in the electoral process so it's no yeah. longer an issue of waiting for the eu or waiting for uh, britain or america to, to tell us send that uh, to send observer every nigerian who is of voting age has That's now it. become an observer. Mm. You have now become a, an active participant in the electoral process. So it, it, you what, go, what, you, what you get your PVC. just said yes. the other day yes. uh, rings, you know, like a bell in my yes. ears. Uh, let the youth wake up. But you see, the youths are not registered. Did you write wrong? <laughs> they, they I think, not, the, not, I think, not even not the youths alone. A lot of our people, people are, are extremely apolitical. Extremely mm. distrusting of the system. They will tell you, look, they, will, they are going to write figures. And they know, yes, our politicians write figures. In yeah. many of the states, real voting does yeah. not take place. Yeah. Even where you see real voting uh, taking place, they still write the figures. Politicians procure from EC8A before <laughs> election day and fill in their own re the results especially and substitute local government election and substitute time. that is why uh, some of us are excited about this yes. um, electronic uh, whatever yeah. so because we yeah. can monitor it not that a politician will just have himself with talks as as you are moving results from uh, point a to point we b they'll go and them. hijack and then they force themselves on us all this talk that you can only rig where you are popular it's not with uh, nigeria yeah. People rig even where they are not popular and they get away with it. Oh, oh, of course, that, that's the meaning of rigging. Okay, then we'll go on a commercial break, but we'll be back shortly. Don't go away.
Okay, welcome back. You know, we, we are talking about the president signing the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. It is now law and binding on almost everybody. Uh, but let's quickly turn things over to Abuja, where uh, the head of management at IASA Africa, uh, Yaga Africa, I'm very sorry, Yaga Africa, the lady is known as Safia Bichi. Madam, good evening to you. Welcome. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so the bill has become law. It's a uh, hooray, uh, uh, you know, for the country, right? Yes, and we're excited. So what we're does, going to all Nigerians. Yeah. What was the position uh, as far as Iaga is concerned? Uh, first of all, uh, we think that this act will make a turnaround in our electoral system if it's been implemented to the latter, especially for some strong, important provisions that are, are being included in this act. First of all, the act will help, um, will help increase or help with the early release of election funds to INEC. You remember in 2019, one of the reasons why elections were postponed was the fact that there was delay in release of funds just about one month to the presidential elections that was when funds were released to INEC and it affected the logistics. So uh, with section three subsection three with section three subsection three of this uh, of this new act, uh, INEC by law is expected to receive its 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 funding for the elections, one year to an election. So the challenges around logistics or deployment of logistics it's in a particular way being sorted out. And perhaps if followed to the latter, we will say goodbye to the years of postponing elections, 24 hours to elections, 48 hours to elections, or on election day. Uh, the other thing is the fact that this same law uh, legalized electronic accreditation of voting, just like Babaji Day mentioned. Uh, before now, uh, in the, in, in, there, there, there are always contention on whether uh, the use of smart card reader is backed by law or not. We've seen court cases that have been overturned because uh, this is being rec it's not being recognized by law. But what, with what we have now, electronic voting, electronic accreditation, or even transmission is not abolished by the law. So we're happy that Section 47 of this new Electoral Act provides for that. Uh, again, uh, if you look at the issue of over overvoting, this, this act helped to redefine overvoting. I think, yeah, section 51 of the act helped redefine overvoting. Before now, um, what the electoral law says states is that if the number of, of vote cards is more than the number of registered voters, that's the only time you can say there's overvoting. However, the INEC electoral guidance has always took a stand on saying that the number of registered the, uh, vote cards is more than the number of accredited voters, then it's termed as over voting. Yeah. But we know that the law uh, supersedes the provisions or any policies in existence. And we have seen what has been happening. The politicians have used that loophole. And believe me, you agree with me that it's difficult to have 100% turnout. So what we've seen in the past and from our experience on the field is that once, for instance, you have 50% of vote cards, what politicians do is they just calculate uh, the remaining number of votes and add it up, and they go to court and challenge it based on the provisions of the electoral act. And of course, they have their way. So we're happy that this is being uh, is being sorted by the law. Again, if you remember what happened, the new <laughs> in, in, in innovations we had in the twenty from the twenty nineteen elections, where people were forcefully made to pronounce uh, election result, and INEC doesn't have the power to uh, overturn or to review election result declares under duress yeah. unless they go to court. The new provision, the new, the, the new act under section 65 has given INEC the power to review election result. So even if someone an, announced the election result over duress, uh, the INEC has the power to overturn such result. Well, uh, these are some of the great innovations or, or the great uh, improvement we think uh, are very, very important to our electoral system. We also, uh, uh, we've also seen the Electoral Act uh, expand the timetable, early conduct of primaries. Before now, it used to be, I think, about 90 days, 90 days, but now it's 360 days for INEC to announce uh, 
the election timetable. So it is expected that any moment from now, perhaps Monday, we wake up to see the official timetable for the 2022 elections. So, 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 so Safia, we expect the electoral, uh, sorry, the political class to play ball. We of course, uh, we're expected to play ball. Yeah. Okay, Poli go ahead. The, no, no, I mean, so it is now left for the politicians to go by what the law says and play ball, allow the process to, to take us home. In are, you, of are you confident that um, in spite of this uh, good piece of legislation that our politicians will behave themselves? Do we have such a share? Uh, I cannot say how... I cannot say that 100% they will behave themselves. Uh, and that was why I first of all mentioned that if we follow this to the latter, it's going to be a serious turnaround in, in our electoral democracy. But we are confident that at least our legal system has strengthened uh, and filled in some of the existing gaps. Of course, Nigerian politicians in their character will always want to explore uh, other means. But for now, we're confident that the 2023 has a strong legislation that has filled in the gaps we've noticed in the past elections, that's the 2015 elections as well as 2019 elections. Uh, we're going to wait and see. There's nothing impossible with Nigerian politicians. But uh, again, I think the, the, the space uh, for them to, to turn around with, with, with the process is, is, is shrinking day by day with us strengthening our electoral, uh, our, our electoral and legal systems. All right. Um, uh, we, we watch and wait for the coming days. Uh, I want to thank you for your time, uh, Safia Bichi. And I just spoke with uh, the head you, of Oprah. management at Yaga Africa, that's in Abuja. Uh, Jide, uh, voter education is key here. Politicians have not helped matters one bit. So we, we are wondering whose business it is to educate the voter on his rights, because he, the voter does not seem to know he has rights under the law. Uh, the, the politicians have a role to play here. INEC also has a role to play. INEC has a unit um, that takes care of voter education and all that. But at the end of the day, just like a general told me when um, I went to my degree in December to do some investigative stories, the equipment is not the problem. It is the individual who mans the equipment. equipment. If the individual who mans the equipment lacks the will to fight, you are not going to win a war. If the politicians do not turn a new leaf, no matter what laws we come up with, we are going to um, discover that we are not making real progress. If I neck, if the crooked people at INEC refuse to apply the law, because we've seen them do that, and I've been talking about this repeatedly, even INEC staff themselves refuse to apply their own rules to the letter. Where INEC, for example, says no to the um, non-use of the card reader, that the card reader whatever the situation must be used, even if it malfunctions on a given day, INEC rule stipulates that that election can be repeated the next day. INEC rule does not envisage a situation in which you will not use the card reader. Okay. But what do we have? Yes. Even though up to now it, it has not become law, but INEC by their rules they told their Rex and return outside that the candidate must mandatorily be used. And those of them who are um, who have conscience, those of them who believe in applying the law fully, they cancel election in places where the cadre had been bypassed. But what do we see? We see some INEC staff, INEC officials deliberately refusing to allow the card reader to be, to used. be used. So we are INEC staff are aiding and abetting rigging. They should be ashamed of themselves. The other day, you saw what happened in uh, um, Akwaibom, where an INEC 
um, official, yeah. that lecturer, the, the, the pre professor, yes, yeah. was involved in rigging for a political mm -hmm. party. That's somebody that mm -hmm. so much trust was invested in. Mm -hmm. Now being the the conductor of the orchestra of rigging, it's a mm -hmm. very shameful thing. Mm -hmm. It's a very shameful thing. Mm. So, we, we, we're talking about this. The individuals, they have a lot to do to make this work. Emeka, hey, hey, you know, uh, Professor Shoinka said, in a country where professors uh, would frown at cases of, say, corruption, help politicians to rig elections, the same you know, by the same token, and you're wondering. It's one of the things, you know, what? people have been also throwing at uh, us that um, you're talking about your benefits and things, talking about investors, but you are not talking, nobody has heard you say anything about the involvement of professors mm. in electoral malpractices. And we, that we must begin to ask questions from relevant bodies because INEC cannot work. Alone, INEC must work in concert with civil society organizations and with various groups. Then, of course, we have said Nigerians must be vigilant. Then, again, we must make sure that issues of electoral malpractices are raised through different means. Social media is there. You saw what happened in Anambra State, in yeah. Iyala, yeah. where an electoral officer disappeared with um, the sheets election for recording, materials. you know, yeah. election materials. What has happened to such a person? People need to be made to face the law. Such a person by now ought to have been convicted. People like that, if, they, is there, if people have made examples of, you will see that the trust of Nigerians in the electoral process will rise. And people will be, you don't even need to talk too much. Mm. In terms of voter education, and people will troop out. You, you've seen a lot of in past elections, you know, people who are well educated, the elite in the country, in past elections, they came out. They came out. We now need to increase the trust of the average Nigerian in the electoral process so that pe more and more people will come out. And of course, I like what happened on Monday when the civil society organizations, right. when the CSOs, you know, when the CSOs came out to say President Buhari signed this, and happily, within the same week, he has signed it. Yes, yeah. we, we continue to So uh, our to problem move had forward. never been a lack of laws and, and so on. No, no, no. no, no. But, but Gide, quickly, can, can we uh, talk about um, the INEC con continuous registration? It's, the registration has been on, and I hear it's going to be on for some many more weeks. But Nigerians don't seem to be, uh, to be interested. Right. Also, it seems the uh, education, the voter education has to continue. It's part of voter education that we need to do. We need to get more and more people to register and um, be part of uh, making the choice as to who rules them. Because if you fail to get involved, then you have no reason to complain if a charlatan becomes your president. Mm. So we just need to continue that education. But, I, but INEC has already um, announced that he's been able to add some millions to the, to the list. To, to, yes, so we are making progress. OK. Mm. Uh, all right, then. Um, again, the debate about that must continue. But we want to thank Mr. President for living true to uh, the promise. So, a new uh, electoral law amended has been signed for us. Okay, to our next story. The hard news here is that the Zamfara State House of Assembly impeached the deputy governor, uh, that's Mahadi Alimi Guso. Uh, seven member panel spent two days investigating the deputy governor. 20 members of the 24 House members supported the motion for the sack. So Governor Matawale picked a serving senator, Hassan Mohamed Nasir Guso, 
I wonder if it's uh, related to the deputy governor who just uh, left, uh, who represents Zamfara Central District to replace Ali Uguso. Now, the sacked deputy governor had been engaged in a running battle with his governor, especially after he refused to defect with him to the PDP. You, did, you saw this coming, perhaps? Yes. Um, the, it's not every governor who can tolerate a deputy that I've chosen. Um, to dance differently. To, yes. <laughs> you saw what happened in Anambra. The governor defected, the deputy governor defected to the APC. They told him, look, go. We know that the APC will not win this election. They didn't disturb him. They didn't uh, get the House to start impeachment process. process. Yeah, okay. We've seen other governors to do that. In Sokoto, um, Mutari Shagari refused to leave the PDP. But the governor at that time, Magataka Dawamako, hmm. is now in the Senate, left him alone. As far as he's concerned, his remaining in PDP uh, uh, amounted uh, to nothing. So, but in this case, you look at a governor like uh, uh, Matawale, the crisis, the problem that he's facing within the APC are even enough. Is coming into the party, is being resisted mm -hmm. by the, um, uh, yeah. uh, some uh, powerful elements there, mm -hmm. who actually, uh, after it became clear that the party leadership had considered the structures of the party to him. So, for him now to be uh, coping with that problem and still have an adversarial uh, deputy governor who what, what? It was not what he was prepared yeah, to uh, take, especially given the press uh, conferences. Let me interject here. You know? we, we must make some money. Uh, we go on a commercial break. Please stay with us and bear with us. This is Journalist Hangout. All right. Uh, let's still stay in Zamfara State. Now we'll share uh, footage with you uh, that led to the impeachment of the deputy governor. This is how it went. Watch on. We've given the parties the opportunity to present their cases. We ensured that we served them. And uh, those who were around, like the complainant were here, the respondent did not appear. We ensured we served him. And uh, on the basis of that, we listened to what was presented uh, by the State House of Assembly. No fear and no favor. We would strictly abide by the constitutional procedures and what we have sworn to uphold. We don't owe any of the parties a duty. What we owe duty is the constitution and the country. I've looked at it. We have called, we have heard the evidence of uh, all those who came to give evidence before us and the documents. And uh, our findings are what we have in this report. So in line with our constitutional injunction, we want to submit this report to you, sir, for the House. The assignments that continues from there are those of your good self and the entire members of the House. I'm assure you that I received this report, I myself and the entire members will treat it in accordance to the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1999 as amended. We will never go out of the Constitution. In line with the section 188, subsection 9 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, quoted here in before, we hereby Refer to the Forest State House of Assembly, Gusau, the Forest State, that the allegation of abuse of office by His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of the Forest State, Barista Maria Liu Muhammad Gusau, ESQ, an allegation of the failure to discharge constitutional duties contained in the notice of allegation had been proved by prohibition of the law. The Deputy Governor of the Forest State, Barista Maria Liu Muhammad Gusau, being guilty of gross misconduct is removed from office for the today 23rd day of uh, February 2022. Those who say aye against Sine, they have served. Hassan Mohamed, so 
Do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear to the allegiance of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the British government. So that's how it went, and uh, the number two is no more, Emeka. Um, the, I, I'm fascinated by Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power. Number yeah, one law says, yes. Never outshine the master. Don't outshine the, yeah, uh, the master. And yes. number three law, don't raise your hand too soon. <laughs> well, but the speed with which the deputy governor was uh, removed and the new deputy governor was nominated and sworn in, is, I think it's unprecedented in Nigerian uh, political history. We continue to watch and see. But um, if politicians can give the same urgency to issues like banditry, security, unemployment, and all yeah. of that, I think Nigeria will be a much better place. Yeah. Gideon, quickly, um, a little confusion for me there. Mm -hmm. I would have expected the speaker as the number three man in the state to have uh, been sworn in. No. Okay. That's not how it works. That's not the governor who pick a deputy. The deputy will be sworn in. The speaker has his own job. Um, mm. It's not mandatory that he should become uh, the deputy okay. governor. No. So it's, it's only in times of emergency that you can have that. Oh, not, right. not in this kind of case. You know that um, General Gusso is one of the founding fathers of the PDP and had never left the party. So I knew that his son would find it difficult to leave the PDP for the APC. I knew that he would not go with the governor, you know. But some of his utterances must have further angered yeah, the, the governor. One. Yes. So uh, people have said that um, I've seen even on social media that, oh, this whole thing was done in a day. It's absolute uh, fallacy. The, from the 4th of February, when the, the chairman of the House Committee on Public uh, um, Accounts complained, raised a petition against this governor, we, we knew that they were going to um, remove him. And the complaint, the complaint that I raised was then distributed to all the members and the members were told to come up with their written position within five days. It was after the written positions were, uh, were uh, pre collated and presented in the House that they now resolved to investigate. It was on the day that it was they resolved to uh, investigate that they now uh, notified the, um, the chief judge to uh, uh, investigate the matter. And all of that, the uh, chief judge, you can see that uh, bound volume. It took them some oh, yeah. time. And they, found, of course, you should expect that they found the man guilty. There was no law that was breached in removing him. I pity the young man. But this is politics. We saw many governors find it difficult to have a deputy who is not on the same page politically with yeah. them. You yeah. saw what Okorocha tried to do with his deputy at oh, that yeah. time. It was the house that saved him. You know? It was the house because the deputy was from Oweri. At that time, they fell apart. The house saved him. He could not get him impeached. Impeach, but yeah. many others can't stand a deputy governor who uh, will not have the same political views like that. That is what we have seen in the case of uh, Mahdi. I yeah. wish him uh, uh, good luck. Uh, is yes. That's the members. youngest deputy governor mm. in Nigeria, I think. But to oh. try to promote the notion that oh, everything was done in one day, but yeah, I, can, I said can. the speed. No, 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 no I'm not referring okay. to you. <laughs> Even the speed that we are talking about, if it was, if it, the whole process began on the 4th of February, many people do not know that it actually be, it began yeah, much earlier. Yeah, they thought it was in one week that's that the whole it. thing yeah. happened. But from the evidence available, it wasn't done in one week. And all of the bound volume that you saw that chief judge present, mm. you cannot <laughs> put yeah, all of that together yeah, if you didn't have time. That's it. Yes. It so could have been done in. I wish uh, the young days. man uh, good luck. So we, we must go. And in politics, I hear 
loyalty is 110 plus. Yeah, um, Nigerian politicians don't joke with it. <laughs> once, once he sees evidence that you are not lawyer, that's it. He will dispense good, with it's you. It's good night. How does he, for example, hand over the state? Maybe he's traveling abroad for medical checkup. Mm. How does he hand over the state to a person that he can see clearly? does not he, he, he can't share trust. his political views uh, and even have been uh, I, I, I hear we must go publicly i hear we must go uh we don't want to be disloyal to the backroom boys <laughs> uh <laughs> thank you on behalf of emeka madunagu mm -hmm. thank you and uh baba jide kolade you. Thank many you. Thanks. thanks and uh, we must go thank you um don't forget sunday 1 30 to 3 30 we we'll give you a two hour bumper edition uh, on the Hangout. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News uh, Nigeria. I'm Citizen Jones. Bye-bye now. Take care.